Today down in the comments, I want to hear from the horror aficionados out there and some of the newbies. Uh, what is the book that got you started reading horror? Or if you've been away from the genre for a little while, I want to hear the book that brought you back to it, that either broke a reading slump or maybe you were like a fantasy or science fiction fan or something else, or you haven't read at all for a little while. What's the book that brought you back to reading horror? Hello, I'm Adam Caesar. This is Project Black T-Shirt, the channel where usually we talk about a horror movie or horror movies and then pair it with a reading recommendation that you'll enjoy if you like those movies. If you want to see content like that, please subscribe. I am the author of Clown in a Cornfield, uh, the YA teen slasher that uh, actually it won a Bram Stoker Award. And it's very recently released sequel, Clown in a Cornfield 2, Friendo Lives. These are out in bookstores and booksellers now in pretty much every format you can imagine, uh, so go pick them up. I'm also the author of a bunch of other books that you can go read right now if you enjoy horror fiction. And I'm the writer of the comic book miniseries Dead Mall, which is coming out this October from Dark Horse Comics. Please go to your local comic book store, tell them you want Dead Mall. Today's video is something that people have been requesting for literal years, uh, five years actually. Five years ago, I put up a video called Getting Started with Horror Fiction, Five Books You Must Read. Very surprising to me. Uh, it was a hit. People still watch it. People still comment on it. People still check out the books that I recommend there. Um, but five years is a very long time. I, I kind of can't believe I've been making videos for that long. Um, I still, I think I still look pretty good. But things change, tastes change. Um, the genre changes. Some of those books uh, in my more popular book recommendation videos have actually gone out of print now. So I thought it was time to uh, freshen up that video and give you six more, because we're not stopping at five this time, we're doing six, six more uh, books that I think would be good entry points if you are getting started with horror fiction. If you are a pro or if you're someone who reads a lot of horror fiction, you don't have to turn off this video. You can, you can keep watching and you can enjoy these recommendations. Uh, but these are geared specially towards um, people that I think might read other genres or might not be big readers at all, uh, but are maybe horror movie fans or horror comic fans or enjoy horror TV shows on Netflix, uh, stuff like Mike Flanagan's uh, TV shows and stuff like that. Maybe you like the Fear Street movies. Maybe you're a young person. Maybe you're an older person. Something has hooked you into the horror genre and you enjoy being scared and you want to check out what horror fiction is all about. In my first video, which I'll put a, a link or card to up here, uh, I went into a lot deeper into the, the minutia and the whys and wherefores and how I was putting the list together and, and, and things like that. And, th and I still stand by those points I make, but uh, I'm going to make less points this time. Uh, so while you may not like everything on this list or everything on this list may not sound interesting to you, uh, I pretty much guarantee that if you gave all these books a chance, you would enjoy at least some of them. If you read all six of these books and you don't enjoy any of them, I kind of don't believe you, uh, but sorry, here's your uh, money back. One last thing, I did put them kind of in order of extremity. So or if you are a, uh, let's say, scaredy cat or if you don't like things that are too gory, too crazy, I didn't put any extreme horror novels on this list. I didn't put any Edward Lee or Jack Ketchum, Daniel Volpe or Sam Kolosik. I didn't put any of uh, those folks on this list because uh, I didn't want to alienate people who are just getting started. I also didn't put like any of the really, really heavy hitters. I did, there's no Stephen King on this list. There's no Anne Rice. There's no Clive Barker. Uh, those are those names are kind of givens. Uh, not everyone on this list is like a complete uh, unknown. Uh, a lot of these are very well-known writers, but I just didn't hit like the main ones. And I generally stayed pretty contemporary. So no Lovecraft, no Poe. So there we go. We're going to start the list now. We're going to we're going to go six horror novels that you will enjoy if you're just getting started with horror fiction. Maybe. The first book, uh, I said I wanted to stay contemporary, but uh, I, I completely lied with this one. Uh, this book is 66 years old, but I figured it, it was good to start off with an uh, old dead guy that kind of everyone agrees is pretty, pretty great. This is Richard Matheson's The Shrinking Man. Uh, now, if you are familiar with the film The Incredible Shrinking Man, you may be thinking, oh, I think of The Shrinking Man or The Incredible Shrinking Man, the film, and I think sci-fi. I think 50s sci-fi, 50s uh, kind of drive-in B-movie. And if you think that, I bet it's because you haven't read it. Uh, this is a book that I absolutely love this novel. I put uh, I Am Legend on my first list. I'm a bit of a, a Matheson fan. 
you are probably familiar with Matheson's work, even if you haven't read any of these novels, even if you've just seen a few episodes of The Twilight Zone, even if you've seen like kind of the more famous episodes of The Twilight Zone, you know Matheson's work. He was an incredibly prolific writer, but he kind of doesn't get the due in the current discourse that he, I think, is owed. The Shrinking Man is kind of a, a bummer of a book. Uh, it is about this gentleman who just starts getting smaller and smaller by a pretty constant rate every day. And the initial horror of it is the, like a body horror and like what is going on with me. And then there comes a point where it's like, I have to stop this process. I have to science my way out of this. And spoiler alert, he kind of can't. Uh, and then getting smaller and smaller and smaller until the world around him becomes alien and dangerous. Uh, I don't think I'm reading too much into it to say that this is pretty much an allegory for uh, a terminal disease or just the idea of dying and not knowing what lies ahead of you. It's really, really scary, and you have all of that, plus you have a guy fighting with a house cat and then finally fighting with a, a, a spider as the world around him gets bigger, and it's kind of a survival story in that way, survival horror story in that way. I love this book, written in 1956, I don't th think feels dated in the slightest. I think you'll enjoy it if you haven't given it a chance. And the movie's pretty good, uh, but the book is spectacular. Next, I want to talk about Mexican Gothic. This is by Silvia Moreno-Garcia, who I've talked about uh, some of her other books on the channel before. I've talked about even Mexican Gothic on the channel before, but I really wanted to spotlight it here because, uh, as I said, we're going up an extremity. I think this is the perfect entry for, point for people who don't think they enjoy horror, but enjoy kind of the gothic and the trappings of that genre. I mean, it's right there in the title. It's called Mexican Gothic. It is a very classical gothic romance, uh, not romance in like the uh, Harlequin, bodice ripper kind of way, gothic romance in the kind of older style, uh, but it is a very contemporary book. It was writ written just a few years ago. And the third act of this book as it is revealed what the supernatural threat is uh, to this young woman, what is the threat and what is the problem with this place and with these people. This is a book that kind of eases you into the horror and kind of gets you ready for the rest of the list uh, because it, it is it does get quite gooey, uh, quite uh, corporeal in its horror. It starts kind of dreamy and mood setting and uh, creepy in that way and then goes for the jugular and goes, gets physical kind of right by the end. The next book on this list is uh, by my favorite living author. Uh, this is My Heart is a Chainsaw by Stephen Graham Jones. And when I say he's my favorite living author, you'd think I kind of recommend him a lot. I do recommend him a lot. I was just doing uh, promo stuff for Clown of the Cornfield 2. I was doing like signings and stuff like that. And I had, had people coming up to me and getting my books signed and they're fans of my stuff and they're fans of the channel. And they'll, I'll be like, oh, what else are you reading? And they'll tell me, oh, I, you know, read Grady Hendrix. I read uh, Rachel Harrison. I read all these people you're recommending. Uh, but I got to Stephen Graham Jones and I really, uh, I, I, I tried to read The Only Good Indians. And they just, they were like, you know what, his style, I couldn't, I couldn't get into it. His writing is pretty, is fairly complicated. It's like, you have to reread it and go back. And uh, so like, I've heard people kind of bounce off his books in that way. And that's why I'm recommending My Heart is a Chainsaw, because I think if you can get into, into Stephen Graham Jones's uh, headspace and the cadence of his words and the way that he writes, I think you'll be greatly rewarded. Uh, but I think My Heart is a Chainsaw, because it is a slasher and because it is, plays with the idea of, is this going to be a supernatural slasher story or is this going to be a whodunit slasher story? Um, it concer concerns a young woman named Jade. She's living in this town that's getting gentrified and a new building development and she's obsessed with horror movies specifically she's obsessed with slasher movies and she starts seeing all these deaths and accidents and disappearances and kind of puts together in her own mind that there must be a slasher going on and she's so intent that that's what's happening that she, you almost start to doubt the narrator you almost start to doubt, doubt jade and you're like is she is something up with her is it it's a great 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 slasher story i don't usually like like direct references to like, oh, if you remember this movie, you remember this movie. Like, it's not really like that. It's not the ready player one of slashers, but in a way it kind of is. Um, but her knowledge of slashers and her love of slashers is, is, is front and center in the book. It's a book that deals with movies in a interesting and emotional way. So I recommend this one out of all of Stephen Graham Jones's books 
as the one, if you are a horror fan, if you're a horror movie fan, it's the one that you'll probably most easily be able to get into. It's his most accessible book in both writing and in content. And then I think if this hooks you, you should go right through and read all the rest of his books because he's great. The next book is a book that I've talked about on the channel before and I've talked about it. It, it comes up a lot if I'm like on podcasts or if people are like just off the top of your head, a quick recommendation because I think it's in the middle of this list and I think it's kind of right in the middle of what I would recommend to most generally everybody. It is called The Return. It is by Rachel Harrison. Uh, to me, this is a horror novel that kind of has it all. It has a high concept, a friend group where one uh, young woman in the friend group disappears for, I think it's two years, she just like, goes away. And we don't know whether it's supernatural, whether she was kidnapped, what, but whatever it is, she, return, she just straight up returns one day uh, out of nowhere and this group of friends who've kind of grown apart since college all get together. They, they have like a girls weekend at this weirdo hotel motel, very kitschy kind of place. And they go there and they're like, we're going to get out of her. What happened? What happened that during that two years? And it goes in some very unexpected places. And it's a very, there's a very strong sense of the uncanny, not only with what's going on, but with like this hotel itself and horror that starts unfolding. But uh, at its core is that discussion of friendship and discussion of like best friends and the idea of like weird pecking orders and hierarchies and how even sometimes you don't really like your friends and you drift apart. It's, it's, so it's an incredible human story, but also a great supernatural horror story, uh, all mashed together. So that's The Return by Rachel Harrison. The last three books I just talked about are books that have kind of been in the zeitgeist. People have been talking about, people have been putting on TikTok. Those are well-read books, especially if you're a contemporary reader. Uh, but now we're going back 10 or 15 or 20 years to Ghoul by Brian Keene. This is one of the books... I wanted to put this on the list because this is one of the books that got me back into reading after I had uh, grown up reading a whole ton, uh, reading a lot of Goosebumps and R.L. Stein and Stephen King and Clive Barker and all the big names. Uh, and I'd kind of gotten away from it for a little bit. Uh, and then I think either senior year of high school or freshman year of college, I picked up Ghoul by Brian Keene, the leisure paperbacks version of this book. It got me right back into it and I read a whole bunch of other leisure paperbacks because of it. It is a coming of age story, it is uh, set, I believe in the 80s, uh, a group of friends, it's almost like a Stranger Things before Stranger Things, kind of kids on bikes thing. Some of the friends have like really bad home life and really abusive home lives and they kind of bond at this idea of like building a shelter, so they build a little like kind of underground secret fort, uh, but wouldn't you know it, there's also a gross monster living in that same area and digging tunnels around that uh, that clubhouse that they've built and, and, and knocking off people around the town. Really violent, um, it's really pulpy, uh, it's really nostalgic and coming of agey. Uh, they made a movie of it, I never actually saw the movie. Again, this is a book that, just for me personally, because uh, this is my personal subjective list, really did get me back into horror in a big way and kind of lit something in the back of my mind of like, I could do that. I could maybe do this. I could, uh, this along with, uh, the drive-in by Joe Lansdale were the books that kind of made me think, yeah, maybe I will take a swing at writing. And I think you see Ghoul's influence in my first book, Video Night. I think you see it very, very plainly. And the last book on this list is uh, a book that's been recommended to me over and over and over and over again. And just to show that I'm not just dishing out recommendations that I sometimes take them, uh, this is The Store by Bentley Little. Little is one of these very enigmatic figures where uh, he has so little, um, little has so little outward presence, social media presence, he doesn't have, it's all non-existent to the extent that like some people have wondered if he's a, uh, if he's a pseudonym, like some people, I know like back in the day there was even like, is Bentley little Stephen King? Um, he's not, he's his own guy. He really is just one guy. The store is the book I'm putting on here, because it, A, it's the mo I'm putting it last because it is definitely the most extreme, has the craziest, weirdest, most effed up stuff in it. Um, but it's also a great example of when people talk about, oh, horror needs to be scary or horror needs to be X, Y, and Z. They have such a kind of limited view of what horror can be. The store is uh, uh, about an evil Walmart chain. <laughs> it's about an evil big box store that just keeps, uh, starts appearing in towns and starts building and starts taking over kind of like 
local small town USAs, places that don't have Walmarts, places that don't have Targets, places that don't have these big box stores in the Moretti, um, and just morally and physically destroys the town and destroys the people of the town. Um, and it's this almost this plague that's like sweeping the nation of these, the stores, the store is called the store, uh, showing up in different towns. And we follow one guy in a way like Mr. Smith goes to Washington, like he's going to stop the story. He's going to stop the, these, this, this soulless corp, giant corporation from destroying his town. Um, and the book goes some insane wild directions. His uh, kids start working at the store as like part-time jobs. Um, and we see some of it through their perspective of like this cosmic horror, almost like cult horror culture inside the store. It is a really messed up book. It is a really creepy book. Um, but it's also, it sounds a little silly when you, when you, when you say this is a book about evil Walmarts. Little is, is fantastic at this, at taking either a high concept or, or something almost openly comedic and still making it uh, harrowing and scary and disturbing. It's a book that came out like 30 something years ago, um, but it's not just contemporary in its style, but contemporary in its ideas. Like you could, you could see a case being made for, wow, this is still happening. Uh, to the country, even though this is all supernatural and allegorical and all that. Um, I really, really like the store. That's it. Tell me what you thought down in the comments. Make sure to like and subscribe to this video. Uh, go pick up Clown of the Cornfield. Go pick up Clown of the Cornfield too. Uh, wherever books are sold, I'll put the links down in the descriptions. Go to your local comic book store and tell them you want Dead Mall out soon from Dark Horse Comics. I really, really appreciate it. I appreciate you, everyone's support. It's been uh, an incredible bunch of years making these videos, and I'm glad that I'm still doing them.